Football has a new goal-scoring machine and his name is Viktor Jokeresh. Viktor Jokeresh has become the first sporting player to score the first hat-trick ever in the Champions League and he did it against none other than Manchester City. Victor actually used to play in England for Brighton, Swansea and most recently Coventry City, but Jokeresh has been in incredible form since he made the switch from Coventry to Sporting. He has scored 67 goals in 66 appearances for Sporting, including 23 goals in 17 games in the 24-25 season. He has outscored Erling Haaland so far this season and the amazing part is, it looks like he's only just getting started. However, no one could have predicted that Jokeresh would hit this sort of height. All his life, clubs have rejected him, including renowned talent builders like Brighton. So how is it that Jokeresh is now the most sought-after striker in Europe? When Manchester City played Sporting in the Champions League, the expectation was that Man City and the robot Erling Haaland would steal the headlines and smash in the goals. However, it was another Scandinavian, Jokeresh, that stole the night, scoring a hat-trick with Haaland being unusually wasteful and even missing a penalty. The night ended with some fans saying that Jokeresh is better than Haaland. That's an outrageous statement considering what Haaland has achieved while being at City, but the two strikers do have very similar play styles and, in terms of talent, might not be so far off from each other. Both of them are powerhouses. They are strong, can play with their back to goal, run in behind and have a variety of finishes. Like Haaland, Jokeresh uses his strength to keep possession of the ball and bully defenders. He can hold up the play to a frightening degree and can also use this to make layoffs to his teammates who usually play pretty close to him. Also, Jokeresh uses his pace in a similar way to Haaland, which helps him beat that offside trap. Jokeresh makes curved runs, which allows him to exploit spaces outside of the opposition's central defenders. These runs allow him to cause chaos for the opposition's defenders and enable him to play in a side that plays counter-attacking and transitional football like they did at Coventry. Also, since he makes those runs across the forward positions, he can get into areas where he can create chances for his teammates. And Jokeresh has provided 11 assists and created 74 chances in 43 league matches for Sporting since he joined the team in the 23-24 season. Now, as brilliant as he is, Jokeresh also has more to his skill set. You see, he doesn't just like to bully defenders off the ball. He has the technical skills to take them on 1v1 situations and dribble past them. To achieve this, Jokeresh uses his ability to thrive in tight areas by taking smaller touches on the ball and using quick changes of pace and direction to get past his man. Apart from his dribbling skills, Jokeresh has an amazing spatial awareness, which allows him to position well in the opposition box and time his movements accordingly. By staying just behind the shoulder of the defence, Jokeresh can make the correct movements in the box to get on crosses, cut back to score a goal or lay off the ball for a teammate. Now Haaland is a more proficient goal scorer than Victor, but the Swede may be a better all-round player, especially as Haaland's link-up and overall play has been questioned many times, most notably by Roy Keane, who said that his standard play is that of a League 2 player. Now, that was harsh, but it gets the point across that there's more to being a good striker than just finishing. As impressive as he is on the ball, Sporting also have a striker that remains hard-working without it too. He is tireless. He's always running. This Swedish striker is like an unstoppable battering ram, but he wasn't always like this. At some point in his career, Jokeresh was easily bullied off the ball by defenders. So, what changed? Well, Victor has always had to fight to prove himself. When he was in his teens, David Eklund, academy scout at Bromma, saw him play for another Swedish club and asked his superiors to sign him. 
Now, the head of Bromma's Academy didn't see anything special in Jokeresh, but Eklund managed to convince the Academy head by telling him that he'd been following Jokeresh for three years and that he was the real deal. So, reluctantly, Bromma signed him and he joined the club's under-17 side. Despite signing the striker, Bromma didn't see him as a superstar like Dejan Kulusevski, who had previously graduated from Bromma's Academy. However, he was effective and he rose through the youth ranks. Then, two years later, in the 2014-15 season, Bromma was in trouble. Their first team strikers had gotten injured and they needed an instant fix. The coach met with Eklund to ask if there was any player he could recommend who would be that instant fix. So Eklund recommended Jokeresh, and unfortunately he wasn't an instant fix. Now this wasn't surprising, considering Jokeresh was just 16 when he made it to the first team. However, after three months and finally feeling settled and not out of place, Victor Jokeresh exploded. He helped the team gain promotion back into the Swedish first division with seven goals in the 2016 season. He was also a key part of their run in their league's domestic cup competition, the Svenskakuppen, as he scored the winning goal in the quarterfinals against one of the best teams in the league, Elfsborg. The player had begun to get attention from other European clubs and by 2017 he became a Brighton player. Brighton didn't rush Jokeresh when he joined them officially in January of 2018. He first began to play for their under-23 team before he made his debut for the club in the 2018-19 season against Southampton in the League Cup. Jokeresh also played in the FA Cup that season and he was clearly finally getting some traction. So Brighton decided to fast-track his development by loaning him to St. Pauli in the German League second division for the 2019-20 season. The loan was decent as Jokeresh scored seven goals in 28 appearances, many while being a substitute appearance for the club. Brighton got him back for the 2020-21 season and he scored his first goal for them in a 4-0 victory against Portsmouth in the League Cup. However, this didn't prove to be enough for Brighton to keep him around, so they loaned him to Swansea in the Championship, the second division of the English Pyramid, for the remainder of that 2020-21 season. Now, Jokeresh was expected to replicate what he'd achieved in St. Pauli, but after 11 appearances without a goal, it began to look like Victor had just hit a purple patch, and only that one time in Germany. He was too soft on the ball and tried to avoid pressure by trying to drift into the wings to begin his attacking runs from the left wide position. Brighton ended his loan to Swansea early and the striker went on to Coventry City on loan for the remainder of the season. There he scored three goals in 19 matches and they had to make a decision on him. So they decided to sign him, but not many fans were convinced he was worth the less than £1 million transfer fee. Brighton were all too eager to send the striker on his way. It didn't look like he'd turn out to be an exceptional player after all. So they rejected him and it was this moment that everything about Jokeresh changed. After knowing he'd been given a second chance in Coventry, Jokeresh burst with the kind of confidence that he'd had when he was in the youth ranks in Sweden and at St. Pauli. He felt accepted and knew Coventry intended to use him as a starter. So, during the off-season period, he hit the gym hard and was determined to pay back the centre-backs who'd tormented him. He switched the narrative from him being bullied on the pitch to him bullying the defenders instead. However, it wasn't only his physical profile that needed work. There were parts to his game that needed to be tweaked. The problem was, for a striker that looks so incredibly dynamic now, Jokeresh could be stubborn and slow to learn new things. He always wanted to know the reason why he was asked to do what the coaches wanted him to do, and this slowed down his development. At Coventry, they saw that Jokeresh loved to drift wide and make runs from that wide left. Now, since Coventry were a counter-attacking side, they didn't discourage that style, but helped Victor refine it and made him more unpredictable by asking him to move constantly across the forward line. 
With his pace and strength, he was unstoppable and a constant headache for defenders. Initially, Jokeresh had the space to operate, but then defenders became smarter. They stopped giving him space, and the Swedish striker had to adapt. Well, remember how I said he can play in tight areas? This was the foundation of his ability on the ball. However, at first, Jokeresh resisted learning something new, but eventually he got around to it and saw it was working and started enjoying it and became more and more lethal. He grew from being Brighton's reject to becoming a major transfer target for sporting in the 23-24 season. It was at Sporting that Victor met Ruben Amarim, the newly appointed Manchester United manager. Click on our video here to learn more about him and how he'll fit in at United and subscribe if you enjoy. At Sporting, Jokeresh offered him a different style of play that gave Amarim the tools to unlock all kinds of defences. His marauding yet technical style allowed Amarim to play more directly. The striker won the Portuguese League Top Scorer Award and also won the Best Player of the League Award. He began to become the subject of interest, but this time from big teams. Premier League sides like Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City and Man United were all linked with the powerful footballer. However, with a release clause of around 100 million euros, Clubs couldn't do much to pursue the striker unless they were really intent, and so they were waiting for him to mature. But with his form in the 24-25 season, well, that might change. Already, Victor has scored more goals than Harry Kane, Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland since the 23-24 season. With these kinds of stats, Jokeresh will surely be making the move to a bigger team and a bigger league any time soon. United could be the player's new destination, considering that they have now signed Ruben Amarim to be their new manager. Now, United usually back their coaches with their players, and Amarim could want his prodigy working with him again, considering how important the Swedish striker is to his style. For more on Amarim's style of play and how he'll bring this to Manchester, click here and please like that video. Although he may try out Hoyland and Xerxy first, still I'm not so sure that they would fit Rubin's style like Victor would. Now, however, the club may task Amarim to just get the best out of the existing players. After all, they splashed a lot of money in the transfer market on them. However, Jokeresh is already at his best. And if United are serious about getting to the top, they need the best. Clubs like Arsenal or other big teams could also make a move on the striker to try and get an out-and-out -out striker so that the now-performing Kai Havertz could play in a more natural position for him. Click our video here for more on Arsenal's title hopes and subscribe to the channel for more. Now City, of course, also need a Haaland deputy. And what is better than having Erling Haaland? Having two players like Haaland. However, surely Victor wouldn't go to City just to sit on the bench. So, will Jokeresh be making the move to the Premier League soon? And if so, which club do you think he'll join?